What's going on guys, Vulcan here, and today we're back in Torchlight Infinite. So for those who might be out of the loop, Torchlight Infinite is the latest entry into the Torchlight franchise. It's not quite out yet, but they've been having some closed betas that you can download and get in on. And this is basically a sequel to Torchlight 2. Now recently I was given the opportunity by the awesome folks at Torchlight Infinite to check out their newest hero they added, the Commander. Now this class is the ultimate like Bandit Keith fantasy. So you get to command a legion of machines that basically eviscerate or vaporize anything in your path and it plays so smooth. It's just it feels so good. So if you like the summoner playstyle, then this is definitely a class you want to check out because it really does a lot of that stuff correctly. So before I get into my impressions, I did want to give you a quick heads up that this is, of course, beta footage, so things might change, and this character was pre-built for me by the devs, so I was able to experience end game. so this really wasn't, you know, something that I put together myself. This is like, hey, check out, you know, the peak, pinnacle gameplay of the commander. So anyway, let's go ahead and let's get into this new class. So first up, the class itself is very torchlight. I mean, you have this dwarf with armor, this big hammer-like staff that you can use to summon machines. And if you love the classic kind of torchlight one and torchlight two look, this should feel very similar. So for the commander skills, I did have a few at my disposal and all of these really worked seamlessly together, which was really cool. There wasn't really any sort of like clunky play in really anything that I had access to. And each one of these definitely played into the next one. So it was almost like this big like crescendo um, and harmonious kind of balance between all these different skills. And I was just trucking through end game maps. And then all these skills also have some really cool support skills to make my machines even deadlier. So the first skill we're going to talk about today is the spider tank. So this one allows you to summon up to five spider tanks that deal ranged damage. And these things are absolute snipers. They will punch holes through bosses super quick. And having these things out just makes my damage just shoot through the roof. So making sure to get as many of these onto the field as possible was absolutely key. Then we have Dark Gate. Now this is probably one of my favorite skills that I got to tinker with because it allows you to teleport all of your minions to you and then give them a buff that grants increased damage and movement speed for a short duration. And I love this because it allowed me to just keep running past trash mobs and then once my pets had cleaned up whatever fight they were engaged in, I could hit Dark Gate, pull them all to me, give them a nice big buff, that way we could hammer through whatever we were fighting. Or if I ran into a boss and I needed help as soon as possible, I could tap this, be right back in the action, and they would chew through those enemies super quick. So it just is kind of a really cool one-two punch, right? You bring everything on top of whatever you're attacking and you increase all of their outgoing damage and movement speed. It just, it makes a ton of sense. And it's just one of those skills that seems to be a perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter, right? Then we have a skill as old as time, and that is leap attack. So you're going to leap towards a target. You're going to slam the ground. You're going to deal some AOE damage. This is a classic skill. It's been around for as long as I have. And this is more of a movement skill for this build, um, less of a source of damage. It's really just for closing the gaps, things like that. Um, I use it sometimes, right? But never really feel like I have to use it on a boss or I have to use it to kind of get the job done in terms of damage. So just a gap closer, but it worked out really well. Now, next up is our other summon, the Machine Guard. Now, this skill is going to summon a Machine Guard to deal melee damage. And while the Spider Tank was more of a glass cannon, this one was the Aggro Juggernaut. It's going to deal a ton of frontal cone damage. And I was able to summon three of these, and it created this really cool dynamic because they would almost trap groups of enemies between them, um, almost like a fight circle, and then just basically punch them to death. It was really interesting to watch and super satisfying for enemies to just fall at their hands. It was great. Then we have our last active skill, and that's going to be Machine Army. So Machine Army is a pure minion buff skill, and this is one that I highly recommend using on cooldown because it gives such good buffs. So it grants all of your minions increased attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed, which makes those tanks and guards even more potent. But the thing is, that's not all. This effect is actually increased whenever you have more minions. So the more minions you have, the bigger bonus all the minions are going to get. 
and you want to make sure to use this thing often and watch everything really just evaporate in front of you. Um, comboing this with Dark Gate, so pulling them all to you, getting that big damage dealt increase and movement speed increase, and then tapping Machine Army to get even more attack speed and movement speed. Just, I haven't found anything that kind of stands up to it. So right now, the, the class feels very overpowered, and that's probably the character I have because it was a very, very, very top-end character. But still, at the same time, it was just so fun to see what this class could actually do when everything was firing, right? All cylinders were working together. Now, we also have some passive effects that I want to talk about, right? We talked about our active skills. Those were the things we just covered. But we also have some passive skills. These are always going to be available, kind of like auras. Now, we have two that came equipped, both of which helped my utility or increased the machine's combat effectiveness. So the first up is Fearless. Now, Fearless is great. It's going to constantly increase you and your nearby allies' melee crit chance, melee crit damage, uh, critical damage, and skill radius. So really, it's just going to increase your damage output across the board. Then we have Swiftness. Now, Swiftness is a passive that increases you and your allies' movement speed and accuracy, which is always good. Nobody ever wants to move super slow, and nobody wants to miss their attacks. So this is going to play very well into the spider tanks because, remember, they're snipers, right? They're using the skill aimed shot, and they're going to be just punching holes through stuff. So you want to make sure that they have high accuracy. That way they hit everything they need to. And then in terms of fearless, that one's just going to make your, um, your machine guards even more powerful, right? You're going to have that melee crit chance, that melee crit range and crit damage. And all of these things are going to play into making them even more powerful. So those are all of the commander skills that I was able to see and use. And guys, I really liked it. You know, as someone who loves pet builds, um, this felt really at home. And again, the whole skill and support skill system that Torchlight Infinite brings to the table shines incredibly bright right here. Being able to take a spider tank and then strap on supports like greater multiple projectiles to increase the number of aim shot projectiles they're able to throw out. You have Bloodthirsty Slaughter, which allows you to consume a little bit of health, but it's going to give you a big increase to attack speed. And all of these things are just super fun to experiment with, to see how things kind of plug into each other, and what you can do to truly make this build your own. And I just, I love it, right? But I know the thing is, the summoner play isn't for everyone. And I get that because there were times on the commander where my pets were doing all of the fighting and I was just standing there. And sometimes that isn't exciting. Even for me, I love pet builds, but I would like to be able to contribute a little bit more, right? Than stand there and just watch them evaporate everything. So I know that isn't for everybody, but the cool thing is Torchlight Infinite does have other classes and those come into play here, right? You have the mage, you have the gunslinger, you have the berserker, you have the time witness, and all of these help kind of fill those other voids that you might want to play instead. So if you're someone who really doesn't like pet builds and is worried that this is going to be like the end all be all class for Torchlight Infinite, I would say don't worry about it. All of the other classes are just as viable. All of the other classes are just as powerful when it comes to being a level 95 with a well-oiled build and all of your gear and everything is where it needs to be. All of them are going to chew through everything. So it's not like you have to really kind of worry about, oh, I have to be a summoner or bust. Luckily, that's not the case and that's not where they're directing this game. So let's take the Time Witness for example. This class harnesses the power of space and time to deal erosion damage to enemies. Now with this build I'm currently playing, I was nuking everything. This build focuses on dropping a skill called Shadow Swamp, which is a large AoE. It deals huge amounts of damage over time, and you can combine that with a skill called Black Hole that'll pull enemies in. So between the two of these, you have this like gravity well that pulls everything in, and then Shadow Swamp just crushes everything super fast. But let's say you're not really a huge fan of how static the black hole is. Well, luckily for you, Shadow Swamp actually has an effect built in that causes it to move to any enemy hit by another skill you have called Shadow Shot. Now, Shadow Shot is basically the caster version of Multi Shot. It's this multi projectile blast that you can spam, and anything you hit will move Shadow Swamp too. So this makes for a super flexible caster playstyle. It's really, really fun to play. And this is honestly one of those that I really like because when you have a caster, you're almost rooted 24 seven. And Torchlight takes that whole kind of classic trope and flips it on its head and makes casters extremely mobile. 
Now, if you do prefer like a more like traditional caster style, you have Gemma, the Frostfire, for all of your fiery needs. Or you can even have a Berserker with a spin to win build, right? You can toss that thing together and just whirlwind your way through everything. So guys, what I'm trying to say is that this game has tons of build variety. I mean, the game gives you so many ways to customize your character, including a recently overhauled system called Talents. Now, Talents are a great way to tweak what your character is good at. So if you take the Fire Mage build, for example, you want to heavily invest into the fire damage nodes or increases to your Ignite chance, and Talents let you do just that. And with this closed beta test, they have reorganized the talents to be better laid out so that players can have more options when building out their character. Now, you do have multiple panels to choose from, and each one has a specific focus. So you want to pay close attention to which one you want to invest in, because as you spend points in each node, it's going to unlock the next column of nodes for you to invest in. Because as you continue to invest in a talent tree, then you're going to unlock more and more and more powerful nodes. And because of this, you want to make sure that you choose the right one. So this reminds me a lot of like Grim Dawn's talent trees, right? Where you need to balance between spending points in unlocked nodes versus spending them in nodes down the line. So all in all, Torchlight thrives on build variety and them adding the commander just adds to the party because there's already a strong cast of characters to choose from. Um, but the real surprise here is just how well this game has progressed and come together. You know, right now, it's only available on mobile. It is launching on consoles and PC sometime this year, which I cannot wait for. This game on PC is going to be fantastic. I think it's going to really kind of blend together that Path of Exile, you know, unlimited customization with the ease of accessibility that like Diablo 3 brings to the table, right? It's very easy to pick up and play, but at the same time, Diablo 3 doesn't really have a lot of that complexity, at least in my eyes, compared to Path of Exile. So being able to kind of blend those two together and meet in the middle, I think they got a pretty decent recipe going on here. And I think as long as they continue hammering home that customization, plus a bringing an engaging end game to the game, this is going to be one that a lot of us action RPG fans are going to enjoy. Now, if you want to see what the rest of the game looks like, you can check out my previous video where I explore all of the different systems, modes, and features that Torchlight Infinite offers. But the cool thing is, a new hero isn't the only thing they added to the closed beta in the game. We also have some new content to play through and new things to experience. We have the Dark Surge Invasions, which are a seasonal challenge. These take place in main quests, and you're going to face off against monsters for extra rewards. Now, these are really cool, and you can start experiencing them almost immediately. So as you're playing through the campaign or you're going through end game, you have this purple button at the bottom of your screen. Now, once this fills up, you can tap on it to instantly summon a group of enemies to fight. And as you do this more and more, you're going to earn better and better and better rewards. It was a really kind of cool feature, right? They added it into end game and it helped keep things fresh. And honestly, it was nice to have control over encounters rather than just running into mobs all over the map. And this was something that I actually actively went out and worked towards to try to fill this up each time. That way I could maximize my runs rather than just trying to speed from the start to the end of a map. Now, Path of the Brave, this is a tower mode that has you kind of clear floors or clear maps to unlock new rewards. How high up can you get type of thing, right? And then we have the Nether Realm, which is sort of the end game structure for uh, Torchlight Infinite. Now, the Nether Realm is getting a new difficulty called Space Time Turbulence, where you can fight against tougher enemies to earn top tier skills to use. And that's right, guys, you heard me. These are actual skills that are gonna be dropping as reward, and this is going to actually help improve your character. You can go chase these things down, and it's really, really cool. So if this sounds like a lot of fun to you, then check out the link in the description below. You will need to sign up for TapTap on Android or Test Flight on iOS to jump into the closed beta, because right now it is only available on mobile. But like I said, come full release, we're going to have consoles, mobile, and PC all experiencing Torchlight Infinite. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you love action RPGs, consider subscribing to the channel. But otherwise, it's been great talking to you. This has been Vulcan, and I'll talk to you next time.